What's up you guys, Rex here. So for those of you that are new here, my name is Rex and I'm not a doctor yet by any means, but I'm a first year medical student at Duke University and I post a lot of videos about medicine, medical school, a lot about getting into medical school, life in general, and I'll be transitioning to some more videos on finance related to student loans and paying for medical school and your undergrad education. But something I do every Sunday is share with you some cool factoid or piece of information that I learned in a week of medical school. So this week, I want to talk to you about the migrating motor complex. So this past Monday, we had our exam on the lungs and all that kind of stuff, and we've moved on to the stomach, the intestines, and just the general GI tract. So perhaps the coolest thing, in my opinion, that I learned this week was about the migrating motor complex. Now, it's kind of a weird name. I don't like the name. The migrating motor complex is really a name for a behavior of the stomach. And so I'm putting behavior in quotes for a couple reasons that I think is interesting when you talk about the stomach and the GI tract in general. One of the key things you have to understand is how it's innervated, meaning how nerves control it. And so you can divide the human nervous system in several different ways that you can talk about it as the central nervous system, which is just the brain and the spinal cord, and then the peripheral nervous system, which is everything that goes outward. You can talk about it as the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system, where the sympathetic has ganglia that are near the spinal cord and all kinds of different stuff related to where it hooks into other nerves and that kind of stuff. But the main idea is sympathetic is like fight or flight, and parasympathetic is rest and digest or feed and breed. And so they sort of have two different goals. You can also talk about the nervous system and divide it by, is it under voluntary control, that it's like the motor nervous system, or is it under autonomic control, that it's totally involuntary. And in addition, there's sort of this extra category of the enteric nervous system, which sort of is what innervates the gut and can really operate on its own. And so that sort of goes back to embryologically how it develops, that it sort of can be done separately. And you can talk about the gut brain axis and how they communicate with each other. But the reason I use sort of behavior is that you can almost think of the gut as having its own second brain that behaves on its own and that there's things your gut does where it senses what nutrients are in the stomach and it reacts in a different way to that. And it does that without having to send signals up to the brain and have the brain process it and send it back down. There's just these really complicated reflex arcs that happen within your gut that allows it to just work on its own and react to stimuli and react to what you're eating and do different behaviors. So the migrating motor complex is interesting to me because it's such a simple behavior that makes sense, but it's something that I never knew my stomach was doing. It's doing it all the time and I had no idea. So what is it? So generally your stomach, when you eat food, it undergoes peristalsis, which is just a fancy word for it contracts in a special way where you imagine a tube and it contracts here, contracts there, and it just pushes food along. And so your stomach does this in a way where it closes off the pyloric sphincter. And so if you imagine a stomach that is coming down like this, the pyloric sphincter is here and it squeezes the stomach. But if it, this is closed off, it just churns the food up and helps break it down. And eventually it squirts, I know that's probably a gross word, squirts the chyme, which is a fancy word for the food mixed with all the stomach acid and gastric juices, also probably a gross word, and shoots it down into the duodenum and then it continues down your small intestine and then your large intestine and out it goes. And so that's makes sense to me. It was like always, all right, obviously the stomach, it's I eat and it's doing that and then it's not. And so what's the stomach doing when I'm not eating. And so I always thought that, oh, it's something I'm not in control of. And so I would never know this, but actually your stomach is very active when you aren't eating and it's doing a behavior called the migrating motor complex. And so this is like a three phase system that your stomach does where basically the goal is it's sort of called like a sweeping system where it sweeps out all of the stuff left in your stomach, whether that's fiber and, and roughage that you can't really digest or like bone or something. But its goal is to get rid of all of the larger particles that weren't released when you were actually digesting food and you were breaking things down into small pieces and first the liquid goes out and then usually more the carbs and proteins and then the fats last. All of that goes out, but there's usually some stuff left over. And so your stomach 
has this migrating motor complex to sort of clean out the stomach so stuff doesn't get clogged in. And that's something I've been totally unaware of. And so part of it is that it's really active when you're sleeping, that's your longest period of fasting, but your stomach is also doing it during the day. And so it's not super conclusive from at least what my professor said in a quick Google search that is this tied to stomach rumbles and stuff like that, that you're getting hungry and so your stomach's like, all right, make sure we have everything cleared out to make room for new food because it's time to eat. And so it might be related to stomach growling or rumbling, but that's not super conclusive. And it's interesting that it is a behavior that is sort of in between of being totally under parasympathetic control, which is that rest and digest, and being totally under the enteric nervous system. That there have been studies of where you do a vagotomy, which is getting rid of the vagus nerve. And so the vagus nerve is what comes, is one of the cranial nerves, comes from the brain, and it innervates all of the parasympathetic behaviors of the stomach and a lot of like the heart and stuff like that. And so if you remove the communication between the brain, the migrating motor complex is impacted. And so there's definitely a influence that the brain has on this behavior of the stomach, but it doesn't stop it completely. It still happens slightly lower frequencies and stuff like that, but your, your stomach, it knows it's supposed to do this and it communicates with all of the other intestines and stuff like that. And it makes this decision that, all right, we haven't eaten for a while, time to clean it out. But I find that really interesting and fascinating how the stomach is sort of self-cleaning. It doesn't need the brain to do that. And just that there's this huge behavior of the stomach that I'm totally unaware of. And we probably were totally unaware of through the majority of human history that it took until we can really measure nerve impulses and stuff like that and track electrical excitation across the stomach and have good imaging to actually see this behavior that we never really knew this. And so it's not something that I know is super clinically relevant at this point in my career, but I'm sure it is in some way. So I'll learn more about it and I look forward to that. And so maybe when that comes along, we'll have another video. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'll read and respond to every single comment. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Thank you.